Hello, hello everybody. So I got to the airport super early today, which is why I decided to film a little Q&A for you guys. Uh, I know you've been waiting for this video for a long time. So I decided to set up my... Hold on. So I got to the airport pretty early today, like I was saying uh, before I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> I decided I would go over the questions that you guys asked on my Instagram page. I put up a question box on my story and you guys asked a ton of questions. So I went through and counted up the ones that were most frequently asked and put them on a big list and I will be reading them in order. So let's start with number one. Uh, the first question that was asked is, what is my favorite artist? Uh, and this was asked a lot, favorite singer, favorite band, favorite musician. Uh, right now, I would say Birds in the Airport. They are super good. They don't have that much music out right now, but the stuff that they do have out, they don't have a bad song. And I work out to them. I I drive, you know, and I belt out songs. I ride my motorcycle and I listen to them. Like it's it's a constant, you know, it's all it's always good vibe. Okay, so the second question that comes to us is, what is my dream place to live? Uh, this question I got a lot, and honestly, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. So. Uh, I would like to live in California for a while, which is, yeah, um, I would like to live in California for a while, but then, I mean, I kind of want to move to Canada for a little bit and, you know, maybe do some firefighting up there, but definitely ski, you know, uh, I want to live in Banff. I don't know if you guys know where that is, but that is kind of my plan for right now is go to school, do, you know, do my paramedic stuff down in California and then move up to Banff and you know hopefully I can get a job up there because I will need to get some sort of travel visa uh, to live up there I think I don't know I don't know too much about how to move across countries but I will hopefully figure it out so yeah then I don't know I don't know after that maybe Colorado uh, I definitely need something that I can ski and lift uh, but definitely definitely California for right now that's kind of where I want to be living you know within the next year or two all right, the next question that comes to us is, what is my favorite thing about riding? And I actually get this question a lot just when people walk up to me and I'm on my bike. Um, and I really can't describe how to put this. And for you guys who do ride, I know you know what I'm talking about, but it's just the feeling that you get when you ride. It's, it's, it's just a feeling that I can only describe as like pure freedom, you know? Like in a car, you're, you're kind of stuck in a box and you have to you know, stay in your lane. You take up half the lane, the whole lane. Whereas on a bike, it's like you have, it, you have all of that room and the bike is just a, like it's an extension of you. Um, and the way, the way I feel is I have a lot more control and it's just, it's so good. The adrenaline mixed with just good vibes from your music blasting and you're screaming, especially if I'm like moto vlogging and I have my GoPro on, I will be screaming at the top of my lungs the entire time. Just insane. It is one of the best feelings ever. One of my favorite feelings. It is like having a pump for six hours. You know, it's like if I went to the gym and my pump just lasted, it's like that good. It's insane. Uh, okay, so the next question actually made me laugh quite a bit. Uh, it says, would you rather have an experienced but tipsy pilot or a new but nervous pilot? And I know I got this one because I was traveling. So like, you know, I, I asked these questions while I was in the airport. So there are a lot of travel questions on here, uh, which I won't be answering all of them. But uh, I, I don't know. I thought about this one for a while and I think I would rather have a new and nervous pilot just because they're like right out of school and yes, they're nervous, but I think, you know, once they get the hang of it, they still know what they're doing. Whereas no matter how you good or how good you are at something, if you're tipsy, like I don't, I don't trust you. I don't trust anyone. You know, I don't trust a race car driver drunk driving. I, I don't, uh, I would not get on my bike if I was under the influence of anything. Um, it's just, it's just a bad idea. So that's, especially with a giant aircraft, not happening. I do not want that anything, anything but that. Okay, the next question is, uh, what is my full name? And that's a question I do answer a lot. Um, I kept it a secret for a while and just kind of didn't tell anyone, but it is Charles Joseph Clark. And for you, I know a lot of you guys already know that because I do comment that all the time. Please don't steal my identity. I know you can't with my full name, but like, don't call me that, please. Uh, I mean, you can call me Charles. I actually, I actually go by Charles at school. Like, 
everything's online right now, but when I'm in school, I do go by Charles. Or like I'll introduce myself to teachers as Charles. My friends obviously all know me as CJ, but the teachers will call me Charles at least until they catch on that I like to go by CJ. Okay, so this next question I got, I don't get very often, although I actually had this question as I first started competing and first started getting into a higher level of you know, bodybuilding and powerlifting. And the question is, do you have to shave your entire body for bodybuilding? And I mean, the easy answer is no, but you do, you know? It's like, you're not technically required to, but if you don't, it's, it's a big drawback. Uh, and I can explain the reason why. Uh, I can explain the main reason why uh, we do it. And it's kind of the same reason that we use, you know, oil or any tanning lotion like that. And the, I mean, the main reason is like light, you know, um, as you, you shred down for competition, you know, during season, um, the light is what reflects off and makes you look more cut. And if you have hair, you know, and you get oiled up and all tan like that, you have oily hair everywhere and you can't see your muscles as well. Whereas if you shave it, you can see every laceration, every striation, like it's, it's good. Sorry, I said laceration. I meant you can see every striation on your body, which is what you're looking for because then the light can hit it and reflect off better. So although you're not technically required to, you do and you will not win and you will not you know get anywhere high if you don't uh and even in non-competition season i still do shave my entire body um or i'll wax uh, either one i just as i started competing i kind of got like sick and tired of like hair and just keep it off all year now just makes it easier for me so come competition season it's normal and you know i don't i don't have to just take off everything um but then especially because you know I'm, I'm doing some modeling and you know some stuff for instagram i like to have or like be cut and i like to have a competition a competition ready you know body obviously i'm way smaller than i would be for any competition that i would be doing and i will hope to be competing this summer again if there's competitions up but for covid there might not be so yeah Okay, so this next question is when did I buy my motorcycle? And uh, so I have a 2014 Yamaha R6. Uh, I got this back in late August, so it is still pretty new. I got it used from some guy who raced, uh, and he raced this bike for the longest time, and he had just put new fairings on it, but there is a tank scratch because you don't replace the tank when you put on new fairings, or at least he didn't. So that's the only like cosmetic issue. And then there's nothing else other than my clutch stopped working, but that actually stopped working like pretty recently. And I still haven't gotten that fixed. So I really need to get that fixed. But yeah, so I got that a few months ago. Um, oh, and the, oh, now it's, I guess it's more than a few months ago, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So this next question is something that I don't really get asked that often. Although it was a question that kind of caught me off guard because it's not something that I kind of like really expected to get uh, during this Q&A and it's what am I scared of? Like what are my fears? Um, and it's not, it's not really an easy question for me because I mean, if I think about it, you know, I mean, you can say like, oh, I'm not scared of anything, which is BS, it's garbage. And I mean, as stupid as it sounds, I think like I do have a giant fear of like death. And when I say that, like, I know that sounds really dark, but um, when I say that I don't have a fear of dying, I have a fear of like what's after. It's just the unknowing, you know? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a serious, sorry I get so serious on that, but that is, that is my fear. Um, I also don't like dolls. Okay, so what is my body fat percentage? Um, right now, I'm not 100% sure. I can't tell you exactly what it is. If I were to take a wild guess, um, I mean, I am pretty cut right now. I would probably say definitely sub 10, but probably probably eight or 9%. I definitely am not below 8%. Um, I will be soon as the gyms open back up and I get back into it, but I spent the time where the gyms shut down pretty much doing a cut, you know? I switched because it is technically bulking season, but I just switched and started cutting because I can't weight lift. So I did a lot of cardio and I went from 165 pounds to 144 pounds in four weeks. 
and stopped because it I backed off way too fast, you know, because I now I'm looking back on it and I, I stopped eating without even realizing it because, you know, as I was in quarantine and I was doing school for my bed, I didn't get up and pass the kitchen. I didn't really do anything that made me hungry. So I didn't force myself to eat. You know, I never like I never went past the kitchen. So I just wasn't eating, you know, and that's what set me far back and now I'm way farther back in my progress than I should be I've lost so much weight and I am very ashamed of it um, that's why one of the reasons I haven't been posting fitness stuff on my Instagram is because I backed off way too far and now I am small so I just look really cut but I lost a ton of muscle um, okay so the next question is how to be pretty I I don't know I don't know. Um, I'm sure you are pretty. Everyone's pretty in their own way. You know, that's the best answer I can give you. Um, I would say if you don't feel good about yourself, go to the gym. That's what I did. And it, well, it didn't really work for me, but it kind of, you know, it, it, I feel a little better. What do I want to be when I'm older is the next question. And I am in school right now for firefighting. I just got certified in my, or certified in wildland firefighting and I got my red card. So that's the goal i would like to be a firefighter maybe go to paramedic school and get that done and then go into more of the medical field but right now it's firefighting and that's what i have set you know that's that's what i'm aiming towards so hopefully again like i said i hope i can move down to california and do some of that wildland firefighting which i think would be super fun you know and and helpful and it's just something that i've always kind of wanted to do <sighs> on the on the serious topic um this question is, are you happy? This isn't an easy question to answer for me. Um, I would say at the moment, no, I'm not. Um, I am way too far back in my training. I've lost all of the progress I've worked for. Um, I got super, super depressed a while ago, and I'm not going to go into that, but that's one of the reasons I completely stopped you know, posting for the longest time, and I still haven't been posting on TikTok. Um, and it's just because, like, what I would post is, you know, my body and me doing my fitness and showing my progress. And I feel like personally that has all gone away. That's, I don't have it anymore. And so I'm, I'm like ashamed and I haven't been posting, which I know a lot of you want me back. And I probably will be posting on TikTok more now, but again, it's just something that like, it, it really, it really, excuse my language, but it really, it really, uh, fricked with my mind, you know, it really, really messed with my mind. And uh, yeah, that took a, definitely took a mental toll on me. So no, I'm, I'm not happy. Um, yeah, but that being said, I am working towards getting back up and I do have my goals set and I have a new workout plan that I can go over for you guys and I will go over for you guys here in a minute. Um, and that should spike me up and get that muscle put back on pretty quickly because it is a very intense plan. Um, which I am super excited to start using once the gyms open back up here in a few days I will be using that as much as I can you know I will stick to that and I'm gonna be on a very very strict bulking diet uh, consuming around five to six thousand calories a day which is way 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 higher than I consume now so yeah okay so this split is very interesting um, I did just create this and this is not the plan that I was on but this is the plan that I will be on coming off of quarantine and going back into the gym. Uh, it is a AM and PM split. So I am working out two times a day, one at 4.30 AM and one sometime in the PM. I did not put a time down for it because for me, I do have school and work sometimes. So I don't know what time I can get into the gym at PM, but I know I can every day. So I don't know if that's gonna be right after school. And most likely it will be sometime around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. But I also do love night workouts and I do love going into the gym and, you know, staying until closing until like nine or 10. Um, I, I really don't like working out after 10 p.m. I'm not going to lie. I do start getting really tired and really sleepy and it just kind of kills the workout. So I don't do that too much, but it is that that is what I'm doing right now. So. Mondays and Fridays, you're gonna be hitting legs. Now in the mornings, you can see I really focus on isolating the quads, which is something that I want to do is do you know quads in the morning and hamstrings and calves in the afternoon. I really need to focus on hamstrings and calves because those have always been a weak point for me. My quads do grow, 
a lot faster than my hamstrings and calves. My calves, you know, they're very genetic. So my calves have always been super small and I'm sure you guys have seen in pictures, they are, they are small. So coming off of this, I really do want to focus on that. Okay, so Tuesday and Saturday uh, is going to be push. And in the morning, it is flat bench, incline bench. <laughs> that, nope, that's not what it is. Tuesday and Saturday is going to be a push style workout. It is going to be chest and shoulders. So in the morning, I have it chest isolated, you know, and we're still hitting upper, middle, and lower chest in this uh, plan. And then in the PM, we're hitting shoulders and triceps, you know? So I do really want to isolate shoulders because again, shoulders are a weak point for me. There's something that just don't grow. Uh, or at least don't grow as fast as my triceps. Um, my triceps have always been bigger than my shoulders. Um, and then Wednesday and Sunday is going to be a pull, you know, back workout. Uh, it is just an afternoon workout. So Wednesdays and Sunday, I am giving myself a little bit of rest because my back days are usually pretty uh, intense. They are something that I don't recover super fast from. My biceps tend to get super sore and stay sore for at least like three days. Um, so I usually work those once every three days, you know? Um, so I really don't wanna have to hit that morning and afternoon. Um, now, you, as you can see in this plan, there is no deadlifting, which is something that I still do. And I want you to know that I will be doing deadlifts, but I'm not sure where I'm gonna put those in. I, I really don't know yet. So as I go in, maybe I'll put them on back day, but my issue, and normally I would put them on back day, but again, my, my issue is I have legs the next day, so I don't really want to deadlift and then have to hit legs the next day and be completely beat. So I'm going to do this plan for at least two weeks and then figure out where I can incorporate it and what day I can put that in or maybe I'm going to, you know, just throughout the week, if I feel like it is a day that I can do it, or on Wednesdays and Sundays, let's say in the morning, I really want to go in and deadlift, then I can go in and hit lower back, you know, and I can, I can hit it in the mornings and then come back and do my upper back and bicep workout in the afternoon. Now, I, I said that I'm going off a very, very strict diet plan. Um, and that diet is pretty strict and I am going to be eating the same things every single day. Um, as, as you kind of should, or as I think you kind of should, I don't really like switching up my diet uh, when it comes to following a plan. I like being able to follow one set thing at least two weeks at a time. You know, I completely understand switching it up once every two weeks or once every week if you really want to, because obviously foods do get boring. So. I'm just gonna go through this plan, or this this uh, diet plan, really, really quickly. So it is one banana in the. So okay. So it is before workout, eating around 4 a.m. for me because my workouts are at 4:30. Uh, one banana, three eggs, and one protein shake, and then a spoonful of honey on my way to the gym. And yes, you might be like, why honey? Like, what's the deal? And what it is just a sh basically shot of sugar. You know, it is sugar that goes quickly into your bloodstream and gives you the pump and it gives you the extra energy that you could need. It is a kind of natural pre-workout and I'm not a big fan of taking pre-workouts in the morning. I do like taking them in the afternoon, but I don't take pre's every day. I really only take pre-workout on the days that I go super heavy. Um, my post-workout around 8 a.m. I get home for school you know I have to go on online school so I usually flick open my computer and log on and then make my breakfast <clears throat> it is one mass gainer shake and I am using a new mass gainer that I recently got um, oh I need to find yeah Okay, so my post-workout in the morning, it is kind of like my full breakfast. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, there's a lot of interruptions being at an airport, you know. Uh, okay, so post-workout at 8 a.m. Trying this for the third time because I keep getting interrupted. It is one mass gainer shake. That is 1,360 calories just in four scoops of that, which is one serving. So that is my best friend throughout this. That gives me so many calories in the morning. That's like a full meal and a half. 
and then it's one banana, one orange, and then I take 4,000 IUs of vitamin D because living in Washington, especially during the winter, I don't get any sun. You know, I'm very pale. I just don't get the sun that I need for blood flow, especially not enough weight training like this, you know, or enough for weight training like this. So I do take 4,000 IUs, and sometimes I'll take up to 9,000 or 10,000 IUs, depending on how, you know, how much I'm working. I don't recommend you guys taking that much. Obviously look into it for yourself and your body weight and figure out how much you actually need and where you live if you even need to take vitamin D supplements, you know? Um, and then it is three eggs plus a full serving of egg whites and two hash browns on top mixed in. Uh, my lunch is going to be at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, protein shake with milk is 120 calories. Uh, and then it's a rice and chicken bowl. I get them from Costco. Usually you can get them in huge packs. Fully recommend that. And a bowl of oatmeal. I, you really need oatmeal in your diet, guys. You need that iron. You really need everything that's in there. Like, that's going to be one of your best friends. Oats are awesome and amazing, and I put them in everything, even my smoothies. Uh, and then snack throughout the day. I do need to be snacking even if you know I'm full for my, my lunch or I'm full for my dinner. I still want to be snacking throughout the day. Whether that's just, I know it's not on here, but whether that's just snacking on almonds or snacking on some sort of peanuts or nuts. Um, I need to be eating all the time. So my, so my, my snack that's set is going to be my pre-workout for my afternoon. Uh, and it is a banana and peanut butter. So I basically just spread a t you know, tablespoon of peanut butter on a banana and eat that. And then a protein bar. And the protein bars I take, I get from Costco also. You know, pretty much everything I get on here is from Costco. Best friend. Love Costco, honestly. Um, and then I'm going to go, you know, go to the gym in the PM and hit whatever it is I'm hitting that day. And then I'll come home and I know I'll be sore and I'll know I'll be beat. And usually I like to take a cold shower after my workouts just to help boost recovery a little bit. Uh, and then I will eat dinner, which could be one of these. It is either rice and chicken, rice and steak, smoothie, or a teriyaki bowl. Those four things, um, I can choose from. I would say... I am gonna probably have the smoothie with one of those because honestly, I just like smoothies in the afternoon, especially post-workout, get the fruits that you need. I don't have very many fruits in this, so it's very necessary for me. So this question is what supplements do I take? And I also get this question quite a bit. And I know I've been saying that a lot, but this question came up around 10 times, you know, as I asked this on my Instagram story. And for me, I don't really take that many supplements. I do take creatine. I'm not on it right now. Uh, I'm about to jump back on and I'm just gonna do five grams a day. I don't recommend doing a loading phase or anything like that. You can if you really want to. I just don't find it necessary. Uh, I do take protein powder and I do use a mass gainer when I'm bulking. So again, right now I'm not on any of that. I sometimes use a protein powder, but right now I am just, you know, I'm not working out consistently at least. So I'm not taking anything, but when I work out, I take creatine, a mass gainer and protein powder. Now I have experimented with agmatine or agmatine sulfate or agmatine sulfate. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, um, which helps cutting, you know, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it does, but my running friends got me on it when I was cutting and tastes like garbage. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's horrible. I took it for like three weeks. It helped me cut a lot. Don't get me wrong. It was great. You know, it helped my metabolism speed up and it, it was awesome, but it tastes like, like if you were to take this, like a ton, like a bowl of salt and add a drop of water on it and then drink it. Like it's so bad. Um, but if you mix it in with like a smoothie or something like that, it's not horrible. And I, I do recommend it if you are trying to cut, you know, uh, and okay, last but not least, what is my big news? What is the news that I, you know, told you guys all about and I said is going to be life-changing? <clears throat> Maybe a little drum roll. I am going to be working for Raw Gear, working with, working with Raw Gear, working as a Raw Gear. I'm going to be, yeah, yeah raw, I'm working with Raw Gear now. Uh, so if you guys want to hop on, I'm going to be posting a ton with them and for them and a even bigger news. I will be moving down to California, uh, right outside of LA here in a few months, probably around August time. 
So you guys better get hyped for that because I am so excited to move down there and meet up with all the other creators, which I have been putting some of them on my story and I know you guys have seen them. I know you have maybe followed some of them, but I am going to be doing a ton of collabs and I might get them on my channel here in the upcoming weeks. That would be awesome. So now that that's announced, now that the cat is out of the bag, that expect a ton of posts from them. You know, me coming back to the gym, it opens up in a few days here. I'm gonna be in there two times a day, every day until I move down, you know? Hopefully, fingers crossed, unless like it gets shut down again. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching this whole thing. I know this was kind of a long video, but I hope you enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned, we have a ton of videos coming up. I am gonna be doing some moto vlogs. Uh, I am gonna be doing some more workout content. I do have some collabs with some big creators coming up, so stay tuned for all of those. Go hit the subscribe button if you can. Like the video, please comment, share with your friends, anything. It helps me just you know follow this and try to make this some sort of dream or career. So thank you guys, thank you very much.